Uh, good afternoon and welcome to Five on Friday where I talk about my five favourite books of the week. I'm really, really sorry for the delayed start. Um, two issues. One was um, my eight-year-old had a uh, cello lesson rescheduled until now and had to tune the cello and the app wasn't working to tune the cello. Who knew there was an app to tune a cello? So that's taken a little while. And then the other issue is um, apparently I had to download a new extension for Chrome in order for this to work. So um, uh, I haven't done that. So now I'm on my phone. So Mel, I can see you're on there. Can you hear me? And are the covers around the right way? Can somebody tell me if the covers are around the right way? It's always a bit more complicated doing this on my phone than on a computer. But anyway, we will uh, push ahead because, you know, if I don't do it now, it's not going to happen, people. So anyway, my five favourite books this week are an eclectic bunch, but I really like them. First up is A Bin Chicken, which is written by Kate and Joel Temple and illustrated by Ron Joy. Gosh, my dog always manages to come in at this point. Um, okay. Um, it is fantastic. So, um, yeah, the covers aren't around the right. Yeah. Thanks, Joanne. Thanks, Mel. I'm just going to have to go with that for this afternoon. It doesn't work properly on, um, on my phone, but the, this is a remarkable book. I have always been a little bit enamored with the Ibis or not enamored. I actually don't like them that much. Um, but they, they intrigue me, I guess is the right word because the Ibis is actually a, um, a native bird, but they are kind of annoying. They hang around schools with the bins and they, you often see them in the street and hence why they've got the name Bin Chicken. For, so for those of you who don't know um, and have no idea what the title is about, a bin chicken refers to the ibis. I love the way this book starts. In an ancient land many moons ago, where pharaohs rule and palm trees grow, lived a sacred bird with feathers all white, an elegant beak and wings of a kite. She sunned herself on the banks of the Nile, but today she sits on a rubbish pile. And it goes on and tells you about how and why ibis hang around bins. Um, Basically, they've adapted to the urban environment. So I know our grade fives next term are looking at animal adaptations. I think the ibis would be a good one to look at. Uh, they're actually quite a remarkable creature. They're loathed by a lot of people. And in this book, they're loathed by the other birds and the other birds snigger at them. But in fact, they, you know, hey, they are survivors. They've done pretty well. Um, this ibis in the book has um, some little chicks and here they are. And they do talk about how, um, and she talks to them about um, being proud of who they are. Ibis flutters her feathers and flaps her wings loudly. She holds her head up as she says to them proudly, we've learned how to thrive in stormwater drains at bus stops and car parks and narrow back lanes. These long bony feet, once made for wading, now make fine stilts for garbage bin raiding. It is so clever. I really, really like it. Great one for early childhood, really nice end papers. But also, as I said, I think my grade fires will use this when they're doing... Um, animal adaptations next term. Now, just for those of you who might have just joined me, the covers are going to be back the front because um, I've had a um, technical glitch. I have to download some new extension in Chrome. Can't do that at this point. So it's now or never. So you get me on my phone and the covers are going to be back to front. Apologies. Hi, Michaela from Singapore. Oh my gosh, how are you? How are you going? Um, what's the time in Singapore, actually? What's the time delay? It's not huge, is it? My next book is Rocky and Louie, and I'm going to turn straight to the end papers because I hate it when the covers are in back to front. The end papers have this beautiful aerial view of the country on which this book is set. And this book is written by Phil Wally Stock and Raylene Casely, and it's illustrated by Dub Leffler, who many of you will know from his work on Sorry Day, which has got a lot of um, attention, deservedly so. It's a stunning book. In this book, there's two brothers, Louis and Rocky, and Louis is the younger brother, and he just adores his older brother. It's a really beautiful celebration of the relationship between brothers and siblings and family and community. Um, it's just lovely. So Louis teaches him, uh, Louis is taught by Rocky all about football and um, all about looking out for um, himself and looking out for um, 
Uh, oh, that's right, yeah. And how to keep away from the big fellows so they couldn't smash him. I really liked that line. Um, but he also teaches him about country. Louis knew how to walk on their country, thanks to Rocky. Don't step on the new shoots, Rocky said. I wouldn't step on you. And it's just really beautiful, the relationship that they have. Now, um, Rocky is has big dreams. He wants to be a professional footballer and he is going to have to leave country in order to pursue those dreams in the way that he wants. As the book goes on, Louis gets more and more worried about how he's going to say goodbye to his big brother and he watches as family members and community members um, celebrate his big brother and, and oh, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it, celebrate his big brother and they feed him and they give him beautiful gifts. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous face. It is such a beautiful book and Louis comes up with a great idea. He makes him something. He searches all over the country for the perfect branch. You can probably guess what he's going to make him. He sits with some elders and he makes the most beautiful boomerang, which he gives to his brother to remind him that he must always come back to country. It is such a beautiful book. I cannot recommend it more highly. Um, Penguin Random House have done an outstanding job with this one. It's going to be really well used. It's about football. It's about brothers. Love it. Okay, next up, I've got two bits of paper to show you. Um, this is a printout of the first two pages of the new Ginger Green Playdate Queen book. So if you have got children who are like five to eight years old, but I'm 43 and I have a deep love of Ginger Green. Ginger Green is my people. So Ginger Green is a play date queen. She's seven years old and she has a lot of play dates in all of her other books. Um, the Very Bendy Friend is, I think, my favourite of the Ginger Green books. As I said, that look, they're not aimed at 43-year-old women, um, but I like them. Uh, they're probably aimed at readers from five plus and the uh, books in the collection are exquisite. Um, Hardy Grant Egmont has done an excellent job with the production. Kim Kane is the author. John Davis is the illustrator and they are absolutely exquisite. If you don't have them, you need to get onto them. What Kim Kane and John Davis has very selflessly done is they have written an ISO edition of a Ginger Green book. In this one, titled Ginger Green, Still the Playdate Queen, um, Ginger Green is in isolation. She's in lockdown at home with her family, therefore she can have no playdates. How does she feel about this? Not particularly great. Now, this book is a free download, hence me not having the actual book to show you, um, from Kim Kane's website. And Hardy Grant has have given permission for them to do this. Um, Kim Kane is at great pains to say it hasn't been through the editing process, so please be kind. No need to put this that disclaimer on it, Kim um, and John Davis. It is as brilliant as all of the other Ginger Green books. In fact, it may even um, pip the post and be my new favourite. Um, I read it to the grade ones, I think it was, this week, and they were, I stuck it up on the big screen in the library and I read it out to them. And like two pages in, they're like, it's Ginger Green. I was like, yep, it's Ginger Green. And, and is that the virus? A couple of the girls just kept saying, is that the virus? They couldn't quite believe that there was already a book about the virus um, and about being in isolation. It was beautiful to see their reactions and they love Ginger Green. They then wanted to borrow the Ginger Green books in our library lesson, but I had to sadly tell them that they're all out. Um, all of my Ginger Green books are always out from the library. They don't even make it back to the shelf. They come back, they go into the return chute, they go on the trolley and they're taken straight away. Um, Anyway, this one's beautiful. What she does is she says, today I am not having a play date with Sylvie. Today I am not doing ballet with Skye. Today I am not even going to bake a cake with Edgar next door. I am Ginger Green, play date queen, and I do not have a play date at all. Nothing is normal at the moment. The virus has changed everything. Mum does not go to work. Dad does not go to work. Violet and I do not go to work. The only thing that has not changed is Penny. Do you remember Penny? Penny is my little sister and she's always nude. Um, I like Penny. She's cute. Anyway, in this book, Ginger Green works out how to connect with her friends. She has a pandemic pizza party online where she does little drop boxes for her friends of some pizza dough and stuff. She bakes a friendship cake, which is basically a sourdough cake. And Kim Kane, I'm not sure if you were involved a few years ago. There were some authors that were sending around um, friendship cake starters. I don't know if you were one of them and if that's where the idea came from. Um, and there's in the back, there's 
there's also activities. Um, oh, free, there's a freedom jar as well that Ginger Green talks about, things that you're going to do when you're free again. Uh, so at the back of at the end of the book, there are activities that you can do um, that Ginger Green writes a letter to the reader and she explains them. And she signs it, Ginger Green, from 1.5 metres away. Honestly, my grade ones lost their little minds. They just thought that was the best thing ever. So I highly recommend having a look at that if you've got little readers in your life or if, like me, you just... I don't know, enjoy that kind of gorgeousness that comes with Ginger Green. I reckon I would have been, I would have definitely been invited for a play date by Ginger Green when I was seven. We would have been great mates. Anyway, I know this cover's gonna be back to front and I feel really bad. I feel like just showing you the spine. It's, oh, except it's a really beautiful. Um, it's As Fast As I Can by Penny Tanji. Now, Penny Tanji um, wrote one of my all-time favourite middle grade books, um, Stay Well Soon. I just loved it. Yes, Sue Whiting, isn't she brilliant? I know Sue Whiting. Kim Kane is brilliant. It is such an awesome idea. It is so fantastic. Yes, thank you for coming online and saying that, Sue Whiting. Um, so back to Penny Tanji. Um, Sue, have you read Stay Well Soon and have you seen this new one? I think you'd like it. Um, Stay Well Soon is one of my all-time favourite middle grade reads and I was so excited to get this one to uh, review and have a look at. It's about a young girl called Vivian and Vivian is 10, she's in grade 5, although she's quite a naive grade 5 child I have to say. Um, although, you know, probably reminds me a little bit of my children, you know, still very playful and naive and, and has that a sense of joy and that the world is your oyster and you can do anything. And what she wants to really do is she really desperately wants to go to the Olympics. She's absolutely determined she's going to be an Olympic superstar and she um, isn't sure yet in what sport she will compete. She has tried gymnastics and soccer. She is um, has discovered she's not brilliant at any of those things, although she's tried her absolute hardest. And she's waiting for the school sports day where she's going to find her sport, her sport that's going to get her to the Olympics. She is a very determined little girl. She is very resilient. And she understands that hard work often pays off. So I love that about her. Her best friend is Olivia and together they form the Olivians. Olivia is quite naturally gifted in sport and um, often eclipses poor Vivian, but there's not this, there's no competition and they are just really dear friends. I adore the friendship between Vivian and Olivia. Um, there's this metaphor of a mar marathon throughout the whole book, which is really lovely. Um, and I, I particularly liked it because it's a good thing to discuss either with a class. This would be a perfect, perfect novel for grade five to read. In fact, I think I'm going to buy several copies for the library and I think the grade fives, if any of my grade five teachers at school are watching this, which they won't be, um, I want them to read this one next term. I think it's going to be a brilliant novel study. And that marathon metaphor throughout the book is a really nice one to look at. Metaphors are such an interesting thing to discuss with um, young readers and writers and the metaphor of the marathon throughout is really lovely because Vivian um, desperately has this dream to get to the Olympics and she puts everything into it but she has quite a few hurdles. So in part two of the book um, we discover first that her mum has a quite rare genetic disorder affecting her heart um, and then in fact Vivian um, is discovered to have the same genetic disorder which means she probably won't make it to the Olympics as a sporting champion. Um, so it's quite moving in parts, but it is also incredibly funny. Um, I was reading it aloud to my girls the other night and we read it aloud for two nights and, and then I had to stop because they were getting annoyed because I kept laughing. Like I was sort of giggling the whole way through as I was reading it, even in the parts that were quite sad. Um, Vivian has this beautiful way of looking at the world and expressing herself and I just couldn't help but laugh along with her. It, it was beautiful and um, and then also I just, this happens to me a lot, I start a book with the girls as a read aloud at bedtime books and then they go to bed and I keep reading. Um, I want to read this, she knows about carb loading and about how she um, you know, although she's discovered that where she read about carb loading is in her dad's old sports magazines, which are possibly out of date and carb loading isn't such a thing anymore. So she um, is pretty sure that quinoa is probably the new form of carb loading. Last night I asked mum if we could have quinoa for tea, but she said no, because she doesn't have time for ancient grains. <laughs> 
it's just like it just made me laugh uh, mum goes to Noah's room to tell him to come and have breakfast ever since he started year nine Noah has lacked self-motivation and discipline according to dad see I just keep laughing it's just her observations on life are just so beautiful I I really like it this is going to do incredibly well it's about um, celebrating girls and their achievements in sport it's about perseverance acceptance of where you might be at um, with your sporting prowess um, I accepted that I have none quite early on yeah accepted that a long time ago and it's about um, just kind of doing your personal best it's got this beautiful mix of humor and reality i can't recommend it more highly um characters in grade five but uh, my daughter is in grade three and she's been absolutely loving it as well and then because i am just so sporty this afternoon look at me talking about football books and olympic books and now victress um i'm actually not sporty at all for those of you who don't know me and just i have to explain again why i was late i had to tune a cello one of my children is upstairs doing her cello lesson at the moment and um, on Zoom. And then I had a technical difficulty and I know that the covers are back to front. So I'm trying very hard not to show the covers. But Victress is a beautiful coffee table book by Wild Dingo Press, a small um, press. And this is a book that is suitable for eight to 80 year olds. It celebrates, it's by Corinne Hall and Michael Randall. Um, Corinne Hall is a pro professional cricketer, but she is also quite an amazing artist. And in this book, they have put together a whole heap of female sporting stars and they profile them. And Corinne also has um, done a portrait of each of them. And in the book, um, Corinne talks about what each um, sporting personality means to her and how she drew them. So here we've got Dawn and then we've got Kathy Freeman. There's a whole heap. I think there's 25 or I, I made that up. I'm not sure. You could sell ice to an Eskimo, Megan. Oh, Coralie, so I love you. I just, I love it when you come on here, Coralie. You say such nice things about me. Um, go and ask my children about that. I, I don't know. We've had a lot of, um, I was going to say mumbling about me today, but not even mumbling. I would just say full-blown yelling about what a dreadful person I am. So, you know, it's nice that I can come online and get a little bit of kindness. Thanks, Coralie. That's why I love you. Liz Ellis, um, who is my girl's favourite sporting superstar because she is a netballer. Um, and it's just really great. So Corinne Hall has done the illustrations as well. This is my favourite illustration. This is of Taylor Harris. That's that iconic uh, photograph that just went viral online. So she's profiled each person, so it's a non-fiction text. She's profiled them, but she's added in why they mean something to her and then how she's illustrated them. I was really, really interested that a professional cricketer also spent an awful lot of time drawing and painting. And I asked my teaching partner, um, Jackie Child, who I refer to online all the time as best teaching partner ever, um, I asked her about that because her daughter was a professional or elite level, what do you say, ice skater for Australia um, in, and in fact knows a lot of the women profiled in this book. And I was just like, I don't know, is that unusual that like a sporting star would also be like quite an amazing artist? Um, but I also remembered that Jackie's own daughter does absolutely beautiful drawings. And I've just put up this afternoon an interview with the author and illustrator, Corinne Hall, on my blog. And Jackie, in that, I asked her to talk a little bit um, before the interview about that mix of creativity and, and elite professional sports personship, what's the word, as well. It was really interesting. So it's a, a fantastic book, and I'm going to buy several copies of it for my junior school library but I think also the senior school library would really like this one certainly the PE teachers will be all over it but it's just one of those books really um celebrating women and their achievements so I absolutely love it and that's all I've got to talk about this afternoon but I can still hear the cello lesson going upstairs we decided on the cello um because it's less squeaky than the violin so even when you're just learning the cello it's not an unpleasant sound it's quite a mellow sound i have discovered um i couldn't have dealt with the violin on any level i played growing up the piano the flute the recorder and the oboe 
I learned the oboe, I bullied my parents into letting me learn the oboe because I desperately wanted to play Gabriel's oboe out of the mission, um, the movie, the mission. I never got to that standard because apparently that's a very difficult piece to play. Um, but yes, a bit like probably Vivian in that um, book I was just talking about, desperately wanted to be a musical superstar and I thought I was going to get there, but... I ended up a librarian, which is also fine. Fine and dandy. Now I am rambling, as I do. Um, but have a great weekend. I hope that you have some time to read this weekend. Um, maybe do some baking. Maybe do some bushwalking. And for all of those students in kindy, prep and one who were back at school this week, um, yay, it was excellent to have some little kids back at school. And um, we've got one more week and then everybody else in Queensland anyway is back at school. Hopefully, fingers crossed, um, because I'm a bit done with home-based learning and teaching at school. It's been trying at the best of times. Anyway, um, have a look at my blog for the Corinne Hall interview, and I've also put up my favourite gardening books this week. Oh my gosh, Anna, you're going to make the glass potatoes, the Annabelle Crab glass potatoes. Ugh. I was thinking about making those for dinner tonight, but it's just the girls and I, and it would be totally wasted on them. Um... I, so I'm just doing like baked potatoes instead, but I'm also doing cauliflower cheese thanks to my mother for making the white sauce that goes over the cauliflower cheese because I told her hers was better than mine, which was really just my way of saying, could you make me the white sauce to go over the cauliflower cheese, mum, because I'm 43 and I'm tired and and I need you. Um, so, oh, glass potatoes. I want to come to your house. Anyway, I am going to go because I'm rambling. Have a great weekend. Bye.